Well, I had a whole other, other video planned until uh, someone emailed me and asked me where a couple of my videos were. My answer to Billy Fitzgerald. It's like, oh, they've been up to their usual mischief, have they? And yes, they have. This is my YouTube channel. Looking at it from my perspective, you can see answer to Billy Fitzgerald there and the one next to it who is NCV Enterprise who is Billy Fitzgerald acting for. Now if you come over to a different channel that isn't uh, the logon channel you actually see they're gone. And when you take that link and plug it in it says oh look at that this content is not available on this country domain due to a defamation complaint. Wow, that's a new one. How many is that now? Seven? <laughs> I don't know. I'm losing count. But what I'm not losing count of, I'm paying attention to who you are actually protecting, Mr. Billy Fitzgerald, and who you don't care what I say anything about. You are very protective of Adrian Brannock. You are very protective of Pete Evans. Don't give a damn about Peter Van Lyshout, Philip Dixon, <laughs> or any of the others, do you? Just yourself, Adrian Brannock, and Peter Evan or Pete Evans. Because uh, lest we forget that. The whole thing with you, Billy Fitzgerald, started because you actually accused me of publication of a private email I sent to Pete Evans. And then you stupidly made all these threats to me about this supposed publication that I'd never made. So I make a publication of it, don't I? And what do you do? You pull the thing down. Now I tell you, I'm going to have to put it back up. Because my apology to Joan Van Leishout will not make any sense to anybody unless they see these two videos here and what I say about her in them because of what you stupidly put in a letter. And what is even more interesting, Mr. Billy Fitzgerald, is that I have seen emails from other people where they have said far, far worse to Pete Evans and about your precious nightcap on Mingenball and your NCV Enterprises and not one word to threaten them. And yet me, randomly, at a time when you didn't even know that I had a YouTube channel and was doing videos, I was just a random person that sent through a comment to Pete Evans to warn him about this village and the next thing you're sending me a threatening letter. That's pathetic. I don't know who's more pathetic. You for what you said in your letter or Pete Evans that seriously, what kind of a man are you? You sooky boy. So this um, last year hasn't been too successful for Pete Evans, which I can well understand that Billy Fitzgerald is going to be very busy keeping all of the people that have said something against him or even against Nightcap on Mingenball. Yeah, you know, I mean, seriously, why did you single me out as the one person who sent an email to Pete Evans and nobody else? Why haven't everybody that has been commenting publicly, not in a private email, but publicly on Facebook that have said far, far worse, where is all the threatening letters to them? No, you horrid little man. You just try and threaten people. I don't know why, to get a kick out of it? To think, well, let's see if I can threaten this person and get away with it? Well, you see, the trouble is that sometimes when you threaten the wrong person, it's like stirring up a hornet's nest. 
And that's what you actually did when you threatened me over such stupidity. I mean, seriously, you actually get paid to do this job? People shouldn't pay you. They should be asking for a refund because the advice you are giving them is, whoa, <laughs> it's really out there on the borderline legal, wouldn't you say, Billy? So you and uh, Pete Evans have actually started all of this and now, you know, after you accused me of publications, well, now that part's true. I have made it a publication. When you made the statement, that was completely false, as were so many other things in your letter. And the fact that you didn't even get a response to that letter, I mean, seriously, um, would a even would a, a serious other professional lawyer respond to such stupidity coming from another lawyer? Or would they just roll their eyes and go, what the hell are you on? So here's the heads up, Billy. I'm just going to upload these videos again. And if you want to put in another complaint, well, you can. If you want to sue me, go ahead. Sue me and show that you are having prejudicial treatment towards me when so many others have said so much worse publicly before you were even aware that you had made those threats to me. I was a nobody, just an anonymous person that had sent an email to Pete Evans and Pete Evans sends it on and goes, oh, here's another one. Well, you know, Pete Evans, Mark McMurtry's there. He's got this all saying about getting some testicular fortitude. I would actually say to do that, but I'm not even sure you've got some to actually get some testicular fortitude with. Seriously, boy, it's time to grow up. You are just making one bad decision after another. And what you're doing instead of taking responsibility for it is getting people like Billy to have a go at people. You are, mm, well, let's just say I could call you a low life. But then that would actually indicate that hmm, low lives have actually got a little bit more character and a little bit more responsibility even. Seriously. You cannot keep floating around in life making these stupid decisions that affect so many people. And then, well, I haven't read half the comments about what has been said publicly about you on Facebook and it is nowhere near what I could say in this video and haven't said in this video. And yet, I might be the only one that you'd pick on for it. Hmm, that's an interesting thing, isn't it? Why would you pick on me rather than anybody else, Cinderella? Well, I think it's time to wake up to a few facts. I'm not going away. Even if you did serve me with a summons, you're going to regret that more than you're going to be rewarded by it. And I tell you that you have given me plenty of time to prepare. And what I haven't had time to prepare for, thank you so much for lodging the development application. You have given so much evidence over, so much. In fact, you have given all the evidence that is needed to actually highlight that there are, well, more flaws in your development application than there are actually things that it's got going for it. What what does it have got? What does it have going for it? Let me think. Um, well, actually, I think it's in a nice area, and I think that the people that live in the surrounding area are really nice people. I think it's a beautiful place for koalas to live lots of other wildlife. Actually, let me just share a brief glimpse of the wildlife I saw when I was in that area. And the first picture is of a plover. Everyone knows the plover. And as I see the plover, I think, oh, Billy, this is me coming for you. You better watch out because I'm going to be swooping. Keep your head down. But we just flick through these. There's a lot of bird species in the area. Yes, this is a frog mouth. 
I was fortunate enough to actually photograph them on several occasions. This little bird, yeah, very curious. Butterflies. Abundance of, and a black cockatoo. But on the butterflies, uh, there have n I've never seen so many different butterflies. And I actually believe that the presence of so many butterflies was due to the fact that um, the caterpillar stage of them actually had somewhere to be protected and grow. And that was in the Scotch thistles that were growing everywhere. So the abundance of the Scotch thistles protected them from birds feeding on them and they grew to be butterflies. And I've never seen so many different butterflies in the area. And uh, yeah, nice close up of a spider. There you have it, the monitor lizard. That big boy was walking down the track and wow, I, I reckon if I laid down next to him, he would have been nearly as big as me. And I'm what, 5'8". I have to tell you, it took a lot to chase after him. They are really quick too when they take off and up that tree really hard to spot if I didn't have such a good camera where I could have zoomed in on him. And just look at those claws. The, that they are just, you know, if you just focused in on those claws, you could actually see, you know, uh, T-Rex or some other kind of raptor. Uh, and I have not experienced these lizards anywhere else. These monitors, whoa. And lots of other lizards. Yes, your typical magpie. Yes, watch your head with them too. Another butterfly. Plover again. Yes, mum and baby. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Just do it. And the lorikeets. Yes, everybody loves the lorikeets. This bald headed something or other that I can't remember the name of. Cockatoo. Yeah, more kangaroos. Look at the old fella. <laughs> He's got a few war wounds, hasn't he? There's Cocky again up there in the tree. These lizards everywhere. Yes. I know everybody has looked, seen them. And look, there's a young one. There's plenty of those precious young ones in the wildlife corridor that they want to build over at Nykap on Minjimbal. It's these that they want to displace and push out. More butterflies, beautiful colored butterflies. Some more of the magpie. This magpie, magpie was kind of friendly and didn't mind me photographing until I actually found where the nest was and I started to take, well, I tried to take a picture of the nest and the next thing I'm getting attacked and swooped at. It's the funniest video to watch because I just moved in and clicked go on the video to video it and the next thing I'm getting swooped and you can see me going all over the place in the video. You can't see anything, but you can see the video moving everywhere because I'm getting swooped. But there is so much unique, abundant life out there. Like this, I thought was actually a fly. I'd never seen it before, but I, I'm pretty sure it's actually some kind of a native bee. And these growing on the dams, the water lilies, beautiful. And see in there, the bees and insects are getting in. And yes, the kangaroos, more birds, more lorikeets. Now these are by far the most intriguing. And this would also be an interesting thing to look at. I don't know because I've never experienced these luminous um, fungus before. I was at a campsite um, out at Chowan Creek and I got back that night and noticed them glowing in the dark. I'd never seen them before. And during the day they looked just like ordinary fungus or you know you wouldn't think twice about them. But when I did notice them I would then notice of a night time that yes you could see them scattered all around the place these little luminous patches of luminous fungus 
and I'd never heard of that and I thought isn't that unique so does this kind of fungus commonly occur and or is it an endangered vulnerable species as well and the minor birds yes they are, they can be quite annoying can't they more lizards uh, what are they called um, yeah can't remember what they're called <laughs> ibis something like that flowers the cockatoos yes they are characters aren't they the cockatoos when they carry on <laughs> wallabies the minor bird close up more lizards turtles it's one thing that it hadn't been considered too with the bridge works that will actually go on over nightcap on Minjimbal there are turtles and platypus like where I attended with that luminous fungi that was actually there was a platypus or at least one or two that uh, kept me company as well so it's a lovely spot so there's been no consideration or survey done because there's been nothing included about the bridge works that they will need to actually do to do the road works on the other side of the bridge and that will impact on the waterways and there are turtles and uh, platypus this pla uh, turtle here has got a fair few barnacles on him <laughs> he's just yeah barnacle turtle now this one I have never seen anywhere else never even heard of it this is a golden orb spider I was walking through the bush looking to take photographs of unique things and I ran into this it felt almost like wire net and I looked at it and I thought well wow, that's a cobweb and I looked at it and it is gold and I tried so hard so many times to get a good photograph of that golden web now I have photographed ordinary cobwebs and they can be very easy to pick up simply because of how they reflect the light off them but this was almost impossible out of I'm, I reckon I must have taken about 50 photographs and probably only three or four you could actually see the web uh, it, it is amazing it is so different to spider webs that I've actually seen before and felt I mean I've run into spider webs even big spider webs before in northern Queensland areas and they're freaky enough but this one was so um, as I said it was more like wire it was very strong I thought I'd actually run into fine meshed wire or something to begin with not a cobweb but as you can see that it's gold it's and it was huge it covered a huge huge area and that's why I tried to photograph it and in the end only the smaller area showed up again I have no idea of the range or the endangered or vulnerability or if these are common I have never seen them before until then and of course when you do discover these things and you say to people oh you know I've seen this people have heard of these golden orb spiders but not seen them and the funny thing was that uh, this was out at Chowan Creek and after I had noticed it I did notice that out at uh, Nimbin Rocks there were I'd spotted two out there as well so there seems to be a fairly broad sweep of these spiders across a larger area so I would assume they would be at nightcap as well but yeah a very different kind of spider just um, some more of the lorikeets another frog mouth and the kookaburra they don't like the kookaburras they just come and sit sometimes they just stare at you and it's like they they're having this invisible conversation just looking at you <laughs> just and yes lots of wildlife so that's the end of my little sort of photographic display of 
the, the diversity of life in the area and a lot of uh, what was I have ha actually looked at at NICAP or Minjimbal hasn't included the birds that it will affect simply because um, they have not reported on the birds in a clear and identifiable way. It's um, something that is, you know, they've registered hearing certain bird calls and they, this is not from actual observations. Like when you're in an area, you do regularly observe certain things. And one of them is, um, well, I regularly observed black cockatoos. You go down one area, another past in another area, there'd be white cockatoos. And the lorikeets weren't as prevalent at Chowan Creek, but they were still there. There were also wild budgies, and um, there's it, the little lorikeet. The, it's like the lorikeets, except it's more green and with a little bit more... Um, it's got colour still, but it's more like it's green with a little bit more red. It's not so much rainbow. I think that's what the little lorikeet is. And they are actually on the endangered or vulnerable list. So, and you do see them. And I've seen them in the areas from between Chowan Creek to Nimbin. So, again, these are species that I would expect that would be in the area at nightcap as well because the the habitat range is, and variations is generally the same so you can imagine that uh, the same types of wildlife are inhabiting the same kinds of ecosystems well that was a nice change of subject wasn't it because this video was specifically for Billy Fitzgerald and saying, look, mate, sorry, but I'm just going to have to upload them again now because my other video, uh, my apology to Joan, doesn't make sense unless these are here. And if you objected, well, you shouldn't have objected in the first place. It was a private email. You were the one that turned it into a oh, very messy situation. And you stupidly opened your mouth and said something that, well, really... You've got no legal founding and backup for it. And to do anything against me would be to show prejudicial treatment because there are people out there that have got far greater audiences. I've got small channel. And if you're thinking that my subscribers on my crystalline geometry channel are, you know, 600 odd people looking at what you're doing, no, most of those subscribers came when I first started it and I was putting up Max Egan's videos. And those people obviously don't check their subscriptions and delete them, so I've still got so many subscriptions. But uh, no, if you want to check my other channels where these things have come naturally, you would find that... Mm, Maybe 54 people might subscribe, maybe 19. You know, we're not even talking hundreds. So you'd even have a hard time proving that I'm actually reaching a large audience. Anyway, Billy, my final words to you are, look, I was going to leave it at that, but since I found that you have actually just gone and just deleted my videos, I'm just not happy about that. And I feel that it's important to point out that the more you try to shut me up, the more I will say. You know, um, I think you might have found that out by now. That if you don't actually want me to say anything, best to shut up and leave me alone. I'll leave you alone more while I focus on on what your buddies at Nightcap or Minjimbu are up to. Yeah, but don't worry, you are on my list now, Billy. You've made your mistakes and you don't get a second chance. You can do what you want to do, make it worse. <laughs> you did tell me, and as I said in my answer to you, that, well, your clients have said you're going to sue me now. Well, go ahead and sue me. There's lots of these videos that, well, if you don't bring them out in court, I will. 
and I'm sure they'd like to hear everything I've got to say. And I've got hours and hours and hours and hours of stuff to say, Billy. I put the judge to sleep. Yeah, well, my voice did used to put my son to sleep. <laughs> oh, dear Billy. Anyway, so I thought I'd just let my hair down a bit with this video because Billy had been a little bit of a twerp and, yeah, I've been trying to keep it on track and on point, but, oh, sometimes I just got to amuse myself with these little twerps that do come along. Seriously, Billy. You might have a job as a lawyer, you might even have a certificate that says you're qualified as one. You may even be qualified in so many different countries. But I'll tell you one thing you are really qualified at. Saying stupid things and also threatening people with threats that you can't actually deliver on. Does any idiot knows that even in that private email that what I said to Pete Evans, that it, you can't turn around and make a complaint and say, oh, I'm suing on behalf of Joan Van Leishout. Unless Joan Van Leishout actually said, sue her because, oh, I'm so upset. But you know what? I think that lady's got class. And I don't think you understand what that is because your clients don't really come in the category of class acts, do they? <laughs> anyway, on that note, Billy, yeah, you shouldn't have deleted my videos. But then again, here's another one you can go for. <laughs> on that note, I'm going to say catch you on the next video, people. Bye.